Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I have a Books Beside My Bed video for you where I wrap up the last seven days worth of reading. This is my reading week from the 26th of August until the 1st of September. We're going to talk about the books that I read. I did have a stack of review copies that I had to finish up this week. So there are a few young adult and middle grade books in this list this week. The rest of the week it was kind of a case of do I feel like something short or easy and that's about where my preferences lay. So I'm going to be talking about eight things and I have actually ticked off two things off of my September reset TBR as well already which is great but I'm not going to do any of my TBR game rolls yet because I'm literally one day into the month. So next books beside my bed video once I've gotten through a few more books from that TBR I'll play the game again. Okay so let's start with some review copies. The first one is a new release middle grade title that came out on the 29th of August. This is True Sparrow Hawks in a Lonely Sky by Rebecca Lim. This was sent to me by Alan and Unwin so thank you very much to them. This is a historical story set around or it starts around 1951. It is in a small rural town in southern China and it is about a family. We learn at the start that the husband and the father in this family has left at some point and is living in Australia. He has left behind his wife and his two children and has been trying to build up a way to get them across to Australia. Fu and Pei are the brother and sister in the story and they are living with their mother in poverty conditions. They are living through the Great Leap Forward and all the complications that come with that and when tragedy strikes they have to find a few unlikely allies to help them get to their father. So it is their journey leaving everything that they know behind in the hopes of perhaps finding their father. It is a harrowing tale but one that has some hope in it. There is a really great author's note at the end of the book where Rebecca Lim talks about the research that she did and talking about the kinds of journeys that immigrants would have faced trying to get from one country to another back then and it was just a really wonderful read about a part of history that I don't know all that much about and I'm glad that I have read. I also had to read Never a Hero by Vanessa Lynn but before that I had to read Only a Monster which is book one in this trilogy. So this is kind of a paranormal fantasy. It, the world is very much Earth-like but there are a group of individuals within this world who are called monsters and monsters are humans who can steal the life force from regular humans and use it to jump forwards and backwards in time. Our heroine in this series is Joan and she is one of these monsters but she doesn't really know that much about it because as a child she kind of had her family's ability but had never really displayed it since then and now she is a teenager and she is going on this first date with a guy that she really likes and something happens while she's waiting for her date to arrive and she ends up traveling in time for the first time and it freaks her out because she has no idea that this is the world that her family lives in. And around about this time a whole series of chain events kicks off where suddenly the mythical hero for the monsters has arrived in town and may or may not have a connection to Joan and the hero begins to systematically kill off very quickly all of the monsters that are living in London. And Joan is able to escape with the assistance of a guy called Aaron who happens to be the son of her family's rival family slash enemy family. This was a really cool concept because you have these characters jumping in and out of time. You have a character who literally knows nothing about the world that she exists in. And despite the fact that she has the ability to jump through time through taking the last life force of others, it makes Joan feel very uncomfortable and very sick because the moral implications of that for her are really confronting. Like I can't really say what happens to set up the conditions of Never a Hero but there is a very big thing that Joan is able to do at the end of the first book that sets up everything that happens in here and suddenly she is reunited with Nick, the guy that she was going to date at the start of the book, and Aaron and the world is no longer what it was and so together they are having to figure out what's going on, why things are behaving in a particular way. There is a huge reveal at the end of this book and while it's really hard to talk about this on its own, what I can say is that overall Vanessa Lenz's writing style, considering this is a young adult book and I, I'm not a young adult reader anymore, her writing style is very engrossing. There is a magic system in here clearly and there is world building but it is woven seamlessly into the story so it doesn't feel like you're getting huge chunks of this at any one point. You are constantly being moved along by what is happening and learning as we go. Perhaps that is because Joan is learning as she goes but that is my preferred style of any kind of fantasy type setup world. Interestingly enough in this book I think one of the most fascinating characters that we meet in the entire series is Aaron and if you've read the book you know you know. He doesn't get as much page time 
in here, but I, I understand the choice that Vanessa Lynn made in doing that because I, I suspect that he will have a really big part to play in book three and we will get quite a bit more of his backstory and his motivations for a lot of things because it's very complicated <laughs> and these characters are really, really interesting. The other thing that Len did really well is that the hero character is an archetypal hero. He is a truly good person who is trying to stop bad things happening to humans. That is really hard to write and I think Vanessa Lynn does a great job. Sometimes it does make the hero when he is on page seem like the least interesting person on the page because heroes are a challenge to make really, really interesting and engaging. And I don't mean that negatively at all about this particular character, and I'm being deliberately vague here, because every other character around the hero is really, really complex. And that's not to say that the hero hasn't gone through some things. Like there are a lot of content warnings in here for torture and trauma, for violence, for death of family members. There's a lot that goes on in the first two books that has caused all of the characters to become who they are. And that was really, really well done, but you do just need to be aware of it going into the book. So I'm officially hooked. I can't wait for book three. I'm annoyed at myself for not reading Only a Monster when I first bought it, when it was first released a couple of years ago, but I'm also kind of glad that I waited to read these back to back because I didn't have to wait. And now I have to wait for book three. So thank you to Alan Unwin for that. Another middle fiction or June fiction title that I read was Sea Glass by Rebecca Fraser. Now this is currently shortlisted for the Readings Children's Book Prize. Readings is an independent bookstore here in Australia and I am currently trying to read through their children's shortlist. I picked this one because it was the shortest and I really didn't have a huge amount of time the day that I read it. This is the story of Kaylin who is living with her mum. Her father has passed away historically off page. Her mother has lost her job and has been able to find a temp nursing job in a small coastal town and that means that she and Kaylin are moving for the summer away from Kaylin's friends and Kaylin's home to live with her father's father, her grandfather, who she hasn't seen since she was very young. Obviously, Kaylin is not very happy about this and she thinks that her grandfather is quite a strange individual, but she gets to know him as they begin combing the sea that is literally his backyard for sea glass. And she begins to learn a lot about the history of sea glass. This is very much a story about generational difference. And I think this is also about how children can say things they don't mean or don't realize the impact of on other people while trying to impress their friends, then realizing the implication of that, that, that there is a real consequence. I will say that there is a content warning in here for an elderly relative who ends up in hospital due to, I think it was a heart attack. So be aware of that going into it. But this story was just a really gorgeous, gorgeous little book about reconnecting with family and overcoming that generational difference and realizing that our words have impact and our words have power. It was a really gorgeous little book and I am in the process of purchasing a reading set for my work. Okay, then we move into the adult titles that I read this week. I read Connell by Samantha Whiskey. This is the third book in, oh my gosh, I've forgotten the series title name. I'll leave the, the series title linked on the screen. Can you tell it's been one of those weeks? This is the story of Connell, who is a defenseman. He's Scottish, he loves to play pranks, and he falls for Annabelle, who works for the town. And the, the story opens with Connell basically receiving a sentence of community service because he ran into a town statue. And part of his community service is working with Annabelle and helping her around her office and organizing town records and things like that. I have to say so far in the series, this is probably my least favorite book that I have read. I don't know what it was. I just felt a little bit like the dynamics were off with Annabelle and Connell. And it was like, it was fine. Like it was enjoyable and I still enjoyed reading it. I just, there were times when I'm like, is this a good match? I don't really know. Annabelle is a very buttoned down character. She is worried about perception and that, you know, that's been perpetuated by family and things over time. And so she is just really self-conscious in this relationship the whole time. Whereas Connell, he means well, but sometimes the things that he does have an impact on other people and he doesn't necessarily think it through. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't, and it's a little bit inconsistent in that way. So I don't know, I feel a bit middle of the road with Connell, whereas I've really enjoyed the previous two books in the series. So, I mean, every series, when you have multiple books, you have some that you love and you have some that are just okay. So I think that's where we're sitting with Connell. Then I read Not Dating Material by Saxon James. This is her most recent release and it follows on from The Husband Hoax. I had a lot of fun with this one. It was just really enjoyable. This is an MM roommates to lovers story between Molly and Seven. Molly is the newest roommate in a house share situation 
and he is a bit of a disaster when it comes to relationships. We have met him in the Divorce Men's Club series where he, he finds himself in all sorts of situations and in this one he's just trying to build a life for himself away from everything that happened there and he's desperate to find love. Like he, he just wants to find a partner but he comes, off, he comes across as quite strong a lot of the time which has varying results. And Seven is one of his roommates who went through the foster care system as a kid and has had quite a variety of experience, life experiences, and just recognizes Molly for what he is, a disaster at dating. And he offers to practice date with Molly in order to help him feel more confident. And of course they begin to fall for one another. In this one, there is a content warning for non-consensual photographs being taken in the bedroom. There is also a scene where it is done consensually later in the book. There's also mentions of past physical and sexual abuse and there is a character who is Seven's best friend who has medical anxiety and that occurs on page. And the thing that I love about Saxon James's writing and even when she's writing with Eden Finley, they both just craft these worlds where you have characters who are friends and they look after each other and they care for one another and they might do silly things at times and they might be a little bit outlandish and out there, but the core of them is this found family element and I really appreciate that in their stories. So this one was really fun and it was just a nice, light, easy read in the middle of the week. Then I read Accidentally Engaged by Farrah Heron. This is a closed door contemporary romance story that features an attempt at an arranged marriage that turns into an accidental engagement because the heroine in this story is trying to win a baking competition and she needs to have a partner. So we have Rena, who is the middle child who is 31. She comes from, I think it's an East African Indian family and her parents are very concerned that she's not married and that she hasn't progressed further in her career. And so they try to set her up with the newest employee for her father's construction company and his name is Nadim. And they both live in the same apartment building. They meet before the parents have a chance to introduce them. On principle, because they figure out very quickly who each other are and that their parents are trying to set them up, she is very against having anything to do with him. But she is a baker, she loves to make breads and he's constantly complimenting her on her bread and asking for her to share it and all of that sort of thing. And the two actually get along really well. They end up entering into this cooking show after a drunken night of filming a entry video for the show. And then they find themselves getting through to the next round and so they have to continue. And it's through this forced proximity that they begin to develop those feelings for one another. This was fun and at times funny. You have overbearing families who mean well, but keep secrets from one another and then wonder why it back backfires and why their kids suddenly go, hang on, just stop, just stop. Rena is also trying to repair a relationship with her younger sister who, who has experienced some mental health issues. Rena herself has been on medication for mental health issues in the past. And there's a lot of complicated things that happen, but it was a really enjoyable read. So thank you to Tracy A who did buy this for me last year and I have finally read it and I had a great time. This was also one of my book TBR game picks. So I can tick that one off the list. And then another one that I have finished that I can tick off the TBR game list is my audiobook for Force of Nature by Jane Harper because I had about, I only had a couple of hours left and I listened to it on two times speed. So I have actually finished that book as well. This is the second book in the Aaron Falk series and it is the mystery of a woman who has disappeared off a corporate camping bonding experience in the middle of the Victorian bushland. And Aaron Falk gets involved because the woman who disappeared was an informant for him and his partner in a federal investigative case involving the company that she works for. And Aaron and his partner are trying to figure out what happened and piece together what happened to their informant. The group of women that she was with are all saying different things. And there's a lot of sort of side plots happening with the children of some of these characters and it all ends up weaving together because what we find out is that this workplace is probably not as wholesome as you would think. These people were all chosen for this camping trip in order to try and develop their social ability with one another and things go horribly wrong for lots of different reasons. And it was just nice being back reading an Aaron Falk book. The, the film is out. I still haven't seen it yet, but I really want to. Eric Banner does a great job with the role of Aaron Falk and the entire series is just great. But anyway, it was nice to go back and I, I had forgotten parts of the story. So it's been long enough since I read it that I could go back and just enjoy the story for what it was. And the audio for it was great too. All right, so those are the books that I have read in the last week. In the comments, I'd love to know if you've read any of them or if you're planning on picking any of them up. Otherwise, feel free to share something that you have been reading or loving. If you want to let me know that you're here but you don't want to leave a comment, feel free to leave a ring emoji down below. Otherwise, I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye, everyone.